Hey everyone. Starting today, I will provide you with several theories that seems insignificant and irrelevant before delving into the topic of lean tools but they will help you grasp the core principles of lean thinking effectively. Some of these ideas may be more practical and easier to implement than others. Nonetheless, they are all important for you to understand and apply lean thinking effectively. The first theorem I am going to show you is Little's Law, a mathematical theorem in queuing theory describing a flow of items through a queuing system. But don't be scared. It won't be that hard like what you can see on the blackboard. On the contrary, it is very simple and straightforward. Little's Law states that the average number of items within a system equals the average arrival rate of items into and out of the system, multiplied by the average amount of time an item spends in the system. The Little's Law formula is, L equals lambda times W. In other words, Little's Law says that the average number of items in a queuing system, denoted L, equals the average arrival rate of items in the system lambda multiplied by the average waiting time of an item in the system W. Because of its simplicity and generality, the formula is extremely handy for a back of a napkin calculation to measure the effectiveness of system performance. John Little, an MIT professor, invented Little's Law in 1954 and got it published with the proof that there is no queuing situation where the described relationship does not hold. The theorem was first applied to queues in shops. It has become well known because of its theoretical and practical importance and turned out that anything that can queue this includes software tasks, project management, Kanban, retail, computer architecture, and even operations management. Let's take a restaurant as an example to understand how the equation works. Matthew owns a small restaurant. He wants to know how many tables he needs to add to accommodate more customers. Currently, the restaurant has three tables which can accommodate no more than 12 customers. Matthew measured that, on average, 21 customers arrive at his restaurant every hour. He also determined that, on average, a customer spends around 20 minutes in his restaurant for lunch. By the given information, Matthew can find the average number of customers queuing in his restaurant by applying Little's Law, L equals lambda times W. It shows that, on average, seven customers will be queuing in the restaurant according to the definition of L. So he does not need to create more space in the restaurant to accommodate more queuing customers. But how does the lean methodology relate to customers, queuing systems, and arrival rate? We can make some slight adjustments to the formula and replace some terms to make it practical in lean. The average number of items in a queuing system will be converted to work in progress, WIP. Throughput is the average arrival rate of items in the system. And the response time or lead time is the average waiting time of an item in Little's Law. Now, the formula can be presented as below, VIP equals throughput times lead time. VIP makes the lead time longer, resulting in slower task completion. Also, if the other two variables are given, we can figure out the third one. Because of that, Little's Law formula can show you how to optimize the workflow and productivity. Let's have a look at another example. Imagine you manage a pizza shop. There are five pizzas in the queue waiting for baking and three pizzas are in the oven being proceed. The total time, on average for making a pizza is 40 minutes. According to Little's Law, we can figure out the throughput is 12 pizzas per hour. If you want to reduce the lead time, you can reduce the VIP quantity, which allows you to quickly respond to customer orders. If you want to increase the throughput, you need to reduce the lead time too by optimizing either the process time or VIP quantity. However, reducing VIP to a certain level would bring another challenge to the system. It would cause a low utilization of the oven. We would talk about this dilemma in the next video. Those are perfect examples. We may run into some practical problems when applying Little's Law formula. Here are the conditions you may need to meet to make your process or workflow predictable and applicable to Little's Law formula. Make sure your processes are stable and easy to calculate so that you know the average variables of W, L, and Lambda. The unit of measure of these variables should be consistent. If one of them is measured in weeks, the other two should remain the same. The total value of each parameter should be the same for the statistical period. For example, the VIP at the beginning of the period should be equal to the VIP at the end of the period. In the operations management, applying Little's Law will help you. Quickly understand three key elements for evaluating your process and how they interact together. Control VIP and keep it at a low level, which means minimal resources, to meet the demand on time. Make an informative decision or predictions on workload, manning, and delivery. I hope that now you know much more about the Little's Law. This theorem is very helpful for understanding many lean tools, such as Kanban, line balancing, and most importantly, VSM. Thanks for watching and see you next time.